But from the VO2 max results, it turns out that my zone two was really my zone. Smartwatches like this Garmin one have a metric called VO2 max and also show you your heart rate training zones. Today we're going to be using some fancy lab equipment done with a company called Endura Prep to see how accurate these watches really are and should you be trusting them with your training. So your VO2 max is your maximal oxygen consumption and it basically is how much oxygen a person can utilize during intense exercise. So for this test, we're gonna be using a mask, um, which is gonna measure oxygen coming into the system and the amount of carbon dioxide going out. From this, this will give us a metric uh, for my VO2 max, and also give me a more accurate measurement of my maximum heart rate. From the numbers then, I'll get a more accurate representation of what my heart rate training zones really are. Over the last year, a lot of my training has been focused around aerobic capacity and training for triathlons. So a lot of that training is included, a lot of that zone two style training, but it's all been based off my Garmin watch and obviously what that thinks my zone two is. So today I'll be able to accurately see if my Garmin watch has been training me in the right zones or if I need to train change anything up now going into the next year. I'm gonna go over and do the VO2 max test now and I'll take the camera so you can just see a bit of footage of what's going on and what the test entails. After that, then I'll sit down, show you all my results, which are on my Garmin watch, and then compare them against those test results. So on the day I did two different tests, I didn't film the first one as it was incredibly boring, but it was a resting metabolic rate test. Uh, I essentially sat there in a chair for 15 minutes, breathing into that tube um, to see how many calories I burn uh, throughout the day. So that then gives me um, a number, and then you, on top of that, I can put the amount of calories I burn uh, during exercise, and throughout the day to give me my total calorie expenditure um, for the day. So that is really accurate and good if you're looking to either gain weight or lose weight. Then from there, we went to the bike where we did the actual VO2 max test. So there are two different types of tests. You can do obviously one on the bike and one running. I'm gonna do them both and I'll show you the running one when I actually do it, but the treadmill is broke today. So we did the cycling one first. Um, basically what it was, um, we just got the mask on. I've heard a lot of people say it was really like a claustrophobic sort of feeling um, having that mask on, but honestly it was fine. It was like just breathing normally. You get used to it very quickly. It was actually harder breathing into the tube um, when you're just sitting there for 15 minutes. So when it's all strapped to you, nicely and you don't have to hold anything, it was actually really easy. Um, but yeah, basically then the test was just a ramp test. So you can do a ramp test on Swift. And it's essentially, you work through different minutes, you work minute to minute, uh, and the intensity rises every minute until basically you get to a point where you can't go anymore. It goes easy at the start and then gets incredibly hard very quickly. And so you probably chill for most of it. Um, and then within about three, four minutes, you find that you finish it. Then you see me, I'll just be breathing while the guy takes it off me. You sit there for a while so you can view your heart rate coming back down. But that was essentially all the tests. It lasted about 15 minutes. Um, obviously, depending on how fit you are, you could go for 20, 25 minutes uh, or 10 minutes. And that was essentially all it was. And that was the end of the test. So now we are back from the test and let's have a look at the results. So we'll start off with the VO2 max and according to my Garmin, I don't know if you can see this, but my Garmin, get off my head. There we are. Estimate my VO2 max, we'll go on the cycling one at the bottom there, was 54. So actually from the test results then, from the test we did um, with the machine, it measured my VO2 max to be 61. So that's a fairly big difference um, in terms of VO2 maxes. Probably not great uh, on the Garmin side of things, but I would say that I've never done a ramp test with the Garmin. So I've probably never gone that intensity. This is just completely based on my training. So it's probably a really big estimate in terms of that. So I will give it that in terms of the Garmin side of things. And unless you do like a ramp test or go, go to complete failure, it's never gonna really see those sort of numbers and give, give you a really close estimate. So that's something to really, really consider if you are using one of these watches. I want to see an accurate VO2. You probably want to do something like a ramp test um, you do it running and uh, cycling. You do the same sort of thing a minute as you increase intensity and then until you fail. The interesting one for me and probably the main reason why I did it was to see my heart rate training zones. I spent a lot of time doing a lot of zone work. Um, as I said before, with sort of the triathlon training, everything's normally based around your heart rate training zones. So on my Garmin, my zone two, where you know you spend a lot of training when you're building your aerobic base, ends at about 135 beats per minute. But from the VO2 max results, it turns out that my zone two was really my zone one. 
So my zone 2 goes all the way up to about 159 beats per minute according to the VO2 max test. So that gave a huge gap, um, which I was actually really surprised at um, in terms of what my zone 2 is. So my zone 2 was very, very, very big. It went from about 120 to 159. Um, and then my zone 3 and zone 4 were very small. They covered, but I went through, there was two zones in about 30 beats per minute and then obviously into my peak training zone. So this was really good to know in terms of my training going forward Forward, but it's something I wish I'd done. I spent a lot of time in that zone too, not going above 135, spending it at like 130. And I was having a chat with a guy actually about it after, and he was saying that was pretty much you recovering and just maintaining your fitness. You wouldn't have done anything in benefits to your aerobic system. So I needed to be about like around 150, 155. So this was really interesting to know. He said in terms of my training, he was like, your VO2 max was like pretty good. So I probably won't do anything in that top end zone. Um, but he said what I can do. Spent a lot of time in my zone four to push that up nearer to my uh, VO2 max because it was actually quite poor. And then look to bring um, my aerobic threshold with it so my zone two increases again so yeah that was great to know but it's actually quite worrying about what um the measurements my watch are actually giving me so would i recommend going to one of these tests obviously from those results i would um and of course do it again and again just to make sure everything's staying in line uh, but obviously it comes at a bit of a cost but for, for one of those sessions it was around 70 pound um, and then obviously double that if you want to do the running as well but if you do plan on doing any training based on your heart rate training zones i would recommend going to do this first just so you know you are in the right zone and you don't waste any training like myself for a full year